My god, dude, it's been nine hours, and you're supposed to guess the color of the marble in my hand and not how many are in my hand. Well, you smell like a donkey's butt. <gasps> you're saying I smell like a donkey's butt. Yeah, right, clown head. I know how to use my three brain cells. Oh, you're sure gonna get it out, kid. Oh, come here, come here. <coughs> you're gonna get a taste of power. Okay, time to record. Oh, come on, Jester, not again. Put the gun down. Come here, you punk, I'll catch ya! Dude, calm down. She's seven years old. Are you really gonna let that get to you? She crossed the line, man. Teach that brat some manners. When I was a kid, I'd get thrown in the basement. Since when did you care about manners? You're the most inhumane person I've ever met. You thought Teletubbies laid eggs. Come on now, you're a grown dude now. Just... Grow up. It's because they do. And don't lie to me. I know I'm smarter than all of you. Uh, yeah, sure, whatever. But anyways, let's just review this game I have. The end of the season's coming, so we have to get this out of the way. Okay, fine. But I'm helping you. But I want that demon girl out of here by Sunday. Whatever's good for you. So, what game are we reviewing this time, Slapnuts? Ugh. Well, I figure since we've been playing with marbles recently, we take a look at Marble Madness. What's all the madness about? It's just a game about marbles. I mean, your sister did go marbles at me just earlier ago. You're the one who's got marbles in the head. Plus, this is an extremely difficult game. So we'll drive your small little brain marbles. You know what else is an extremely difficult game? Trying to keep me away from the kid's birthday party. Anyways, what's with the funeral outfit you have on? Did the old man finally die? Or are you just James Bond? Nah, I've had that outfit for a couple of years. I got too big in it. Yeah, no one wants to see your man boobs, nor that Kirby stomach you got, Chris. Speak for yourself. What? Seems fine to me. Whatever you say. Let's get into the review. Released in 1985 for the Nintendo Entertainment System, Marble Madness is a simple game where you control a marble down a path, dodging multiple obstacles without falling down into a bottomless pit, or having too high of a drop destroying your ball. The goal is to make it to the end of the track before the time runs out. The game was originally an arcade cabinet using a trackball that was developed by Mark Kearney and published by Atari. Looking at the title screen, we press and choose how many people are playing, then enter our name for the leaderboard. And finally, we choose the control type for the game. The control type affects how easy it is to control the ball, 90 degrees being the easiest and 45 being the hardest. In the first level, we go down hills being careful not to fall out of the map. There's a tricky little turn that can launch us off the track, but it's not too difficult. It is a short and sweet level to get use of how to control the marble. Now in the second level, we get introduced to more obstacles. We have a black marble that can knock us off the map, these slinky type things that can eat us, and then a platform that rises and drops. The only way to get a game over is by not making it to the finish line in time. There are no lives, and when you die from falling or by any enemy, you'll respawn back to where you were. Now we go down a pipe across a narrow bridge and then into another pipe. The finish line is in plain sight, there's just a net with a hole in the center that can cause you trouble. Levels get harder as they progress, so from here on out, things will start to get a little tricky. In the third level, we go through this narrow passageway that can really slow us down by knocking us into walls like a pinball. 
Oh, oh God, what the heck is that passageway? What, what's wrong? Where'd you come from? Do you not see that giant swastika of a maze? Come on, old man, you're thinking about this too hard. It doesn't even look like a Nazi swastika. Oh, you young people, always thinking you're better than us. See me? I have a better experience of the world. You only know video games from your interior generation. Your generation is prehistoric. I bet you walked around when the dinosaurs were walking. You know, fine. I had enough of you young people. Enjoy your game made by the third rep. God. <sighs> What's up the old man's butt crack? Dementia, PTSD, I'm sure there's a lot of things up there. Once past the maze, we are greeted by the Slinkies once again, and we also have these moving puddles of acid that will melt your marble. We go down through another tube and go down through narrow tracks where the marble needs enough momentum and speed to make it to the finish line. In the fourth level we enter hell. We have to get through a ramp and make it to the other side. You may fall a few times, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Then our marble goes onto a catapult and gets launched to the other side. Now this is where things start to change. You have these yellow poles that keep popping up and down in different patterns. You can bonk into the pole as it pops up, causing your marble to go dizzy and making you possibly fall off the course. Or you can land on top of it, it launches you up, and then causes you to bust your marble when you land. This part keeps wasting my time. I can get past the first two parts, but in the last one, you need enough momentum to get over a gap and make it to the other side. I can hardly guess the rhythm because it always changes up as I try to get past it. But one time I finally got past it, but I didn't have enough momentum or speed to make it to the other side. I did it again, and my marble got to a pretty fast speed and still didn't make it. I was able to get past the other levels, no problem, but this one's just kicking me in the balls. But then I found out about something. There's two ways to get past the level. If you look closely at each level, you will see there are separate paths. But these paths were quite hard to see because of the isometric perspective along the 2D, 3D graphics of the game. In level 4, when you get launched by the catapult to the other side, there's a narrow passageway your marble can go across. I've seen it all the time when playing this level, but it looked like it led to nothing. You have to be very careful going across because your marble can easily fall off. And so, there we have it. I finally got past the Walmart Poles of Doom. We finally make it to the end of the level. But, we have these hammers that are trying to smash you without your consent. Just follow their rhythm and you should make it to the end with 20 to 30 seconds to spare. Before we go on, let us talk about time in this game. After completing each level, you will be given a time bonus. This will give you extra points for your final score. If you finish with 23 seconds, you'll get 2300 bonus points. If you finish with 25 seconds, you'll get 2,500 bonus points. You also get whatever leftover time you had on top of the time for the next course, giving you more time to complete it. In the next level, you go up a windy staircase and go past a board of tiny marbles and tiny slinkies from the past levels. Then you go through bumping tracks, and then these reappearing crows that will fly past you, and you'll have to get past them without touching them. Now at the end of the level, you will have to make it up a small ramp to reach the finish, but by the there I was running out of time. I fell down and the time ran out and I had to restart. It's doable. I just ran out of time. Yeah. When you're in the basement. <laughs> Jesser, is there something you'd like to share with the viewers? Yes. In fact, I do. Don't be awake at 4 a.m. tonight. You will suffer the utmost deadliest consequences. You will know real suffering. If you are awake at 4 in the morning, you will either live to regret it or die knowing it. You will be stuck in the break limbo for the rest of your eternity, forever living the final moments of your garbage, pathetic life. And the last thing you will always see before it replays itself is a man with a colorful mask wearing the most dashing of shades. You have been warned. Uh... Okay. Yeah.
Now we make it to the final level of the game. This level really hurt my head originally looking at it. You have to go down a path and land inside of a hole to make it to the track. It looks like the hole we need to get down is below us, but it's actually straight across from us. It's just because of the trippy graphics this game uses. I should know, I'm using footage for this last video off of YouTube because I found out OBS randomly stopped recording when I got there. So enjoy the quality improvement, credit will be provided in the description below. Anyways, we have to get past the moving puddles of acid, get past the big black marble, and now we make it to the end of the level. It looks like we can just easily make it to the finish, but you actually have to guide your marble down a moving path that gets rid of the original path behind it. This part of the level really had my heart racing, but once you get past it and reach the finish line, you have beaten Marble Madness. You get a nice congratulations screen, showing your final score with a nice soundtrack. So yeah, there you have it folks, that's Marble Madness for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a very short and simple game, but very hard, and it's very rewarding once you beat it. So without further ado, let's get into the scoring. For those of you who are new to this series, here's the score system. Games that have no story will be scored as following. The graphics are scored 0 to 10, music and audio 0 to 20, replay value 0 to 25, gameplay 0 to 30, and controls 0 to 35. This all adds up to 120 points total. I give the graphics and visual appearance of Marble Madness a 9 out of 10. The graphics are very impressive for the Nintendo Entertainment System, and I'm blown away how they actually managed to pull this off. I give the music and audio of Marble Madness a 14 out of 20. In my personal opinion, I feel they could have done a little better with the soundtracks, but they're still quite good and I love to give them a listen. It was composed by David Wise for the NES version who only a few months later would compose for Cobra Triangle, which I covered before. I give the replay value of Marble Madness a 25 out of 25. After beating this, I would love to beat it again someday with a better score than I originally did today, and heck, maybe even beat it faster than I could. So personally, I think the replay value of the game is great. I give the gameplay and features of Marble Madness an 18 out of 30. The game is very simplistic, which isn't a bad thing. I just wish there was maybe a a little more to this game, like add little power-ups like extra speed. I wish there were more levels to this game, because all the levels are really short and there's not many of them. I believe it was due to the cartridge related issues because the game does use very advanced graphics. I give the controls of Marble Madness a 29 out of 35. When I first bought the game, I thought the controls would be awful due to how the game looks. But to my surprise, it controlled insanely and impressively well. The ball really feels like it's moving where you're pushing down on the D-pad. And the fact it's doing that with the D-pad is insane. I expected some Cuber on NES type controls. But no, the only problem is momentum. When I'm looking at long plays, momentum is used to get past big gaps like where the yellow poles were. But when I try, I can't get enough momentum, and I'm doing exactly what they do. So with everything all added up, we get the total score of a 96 out of 120, giving us a percentage of an 80% in the letter grade of a B-. So yeah guys, that was Marble Madness for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's a pretty alright game and has a lot of challenge to it. I think you should get this game if you haven't already. It's quite worth its price. So, that does conclude this review. I will see you all next time, and peace out. But you haven't fooled me. Woo! The Red Rider Carbine Action Rifle strikes again! Oh. Oh.
Hi everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe. Anyways, I'm doing this little portion right here because I want to announce the next episode, episode 11, is going to be the season finale. Not the series finale, of course. But yeah, this season's already coming to an end. It's quite crazy uh, because it feels like it was just yesterday I started this series. So yeah, and a little bit about uh, next episode is it might take a while to do. It might even take longer than it took to make Nuclear Strike 64. I know I just started summer break and I should have like all the time, but I'm still a little busy over the summer. I got football camp Monday through Thursday for a few hours each day. It goes on throughout the whole summer. And it's quite a lengthy episode. It might be the longest one yet. Uh, I got really big ideas for using the green screen more for that episode. So yeah, it's gonna take a while. I'm hope so. Like the main goal is to get out by June, but it might come out a little early July. So yeah, once that's done, I'll have like a month or two uh, in between the seasons to put out some other videos, some regular content, and then September get back into the series. So yeah. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.